not towards the middle. So just right, probably about an inch inside. Yep, everybody got it? Uh, all right, and for distance, one of the things that uh, I wanna teach you guys is lining up your shoulders, depending on where you're throwing, whether you're throwing a hyzer or an anhyzer. So I'll set up. So if I'm gonna pretend like I'm driving towards you guys, uh, one of the things that I see a lot of people make a mistake is they'll be throwing a big hyzer shot or even a big anhyzer shot, and they won't change the way that they run up. They'll still try to run up straight at it and then either try to pick a spot right here or pick a spot and open their shoulders up instead of pick from the left or right side of the tee pad. And if I was going to throw a big hyzer, I would line up from the left side of the tee pad and come to the right side right here so I can have right there. So I have no room for error over here. I'm never going to throw it over here. I would never run up towards the middle. I want to throw hyzer and they would come up in hyzer. So I'd make it a lot more consistent throwing hyzer shots just lining up on the left side of the tee pad. That same thing for Anheuser's. So you're going to line up on the right side and then make it to where your shoulders open up this way. You're still so standing not, straight forward. You're not, what's that? You're still standing straight forward. You're not like standing sideways when you start out. No, when I no when I start out, I'm still going to stand right here. Then with my X step, is I'm going to rotate my body to where it is sideways. So when I start out, I'm not going to start out right here and then run up. No, I'm going to start out right here and get all my power going and then rotate my shoulders this way to throw. So if I'm going to throw a big anhyzer around you guys, I could never go like this and then throw it over here. It'd just be impossible. So it's a lot more consistent to line up your shoulders to say which shot you're throwing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, and then another thing is uh, run-up. Is I don't know if a lot of people use... How many people use an X-step? Pretty much everybody. And one of the things with the X-step is you get all your power from your last two steps from when your left foot plants and your right foot is coming down. So what that is, that's the main point to where you want to focus on if you're trying to focus on getting more distance, is you want to practice getting from right here to this, shifting your body weight from your left foot into your throw. And the best way to do that is what I found is throwing standstill shots in just an open field. Learn to get all your power on your left leg, even over exaggerate it and lean all the way back and then come forward and push your hips into your shot. Who's played ball golf or softball or anything like that? Because it's the same thing as when you're gonna hit a golf ball is you don't just stand there and swing or you don't rotate your hip this way. Is that you rotate your hips with the way that you want to hit the ball. Same with softball or baseball or anything is you just rotate your hips into it. So with this dog you're gonna throw and you come all the way back and you shift them this way. Shift them sideways, don't shift them around. Don't come away from your body. You want to stay really close and tight. And with that in mind, it's the same thing is who throws, who throws, who thinks they throw really far? <laughs> no, I need somebody to come up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just pretend you're going to throw this way. Just reach, like you're going to throw a stencil shot. Yeah, pretty stand. Yeah, and then reach back. So just like that, when people say stay tight or they say stay above your chest, you don't want to stay around your chest. You want to stay towards your around your core. You play and throw it. Has anybody played ultimate or plays ultimate or anything like that? Anyways, when they tee off, they call it a pull. They call it a pull because when you're going to go throw, it's the same thing like you're pulling the disc away from somebody behind you right here. You're pulling forward. So if you're going to throw this way, you're going to this way. Yeah. If you're going to come this way, you're going to throw as hard as you can. You're going to feel like you're pulling from somebody right here. He's going to feel... You feel like he's pulling from somebody off the ground and pulling forward. So pull me forward. That's where you're gonna throw your disc. Just have somebody. That's where you want to do is just pulling somebody off the ground <coughs> forward. You're not throwing from up here. If he was gonna throw, he's not gonna throw from up here, and he's not gonna hold his arm outside of his body. There's no power right here. All your power comes from low to high and coming low through your core. So if you're gonna yeah, always, if you're going to practice getting more distance, what you suggest is put yourself in the position, reach all the way back. Don't even matter, it doesn't even matter where the disc goes. But reach all the way back on your left leg and then pull forward like somebody's ripping the disc out of your hand. Just like that, over and over and over again. And get the repetition. Any questions? Nothing? A random question? <laughs> How do you change your shot when you're facing the head when you're saying it? Uh, 
Uh, it's all disc selection. So for me, I try to keep it the same angle on every shot. Because I was going to throw into a headwind, and I'm either going to throw a more stable disc or a more understable disc, depending on what I want to do. So it would, in, in the wind, it's all about angles. Because you could throw, you could not even throw hard and throw the same type of distance if you're throwing different type of stability discs. Right. I have a problem with turning everything over. In a headwind? In a headwind. Even to take my most stable disc, I always. Yeah, it might be from rolling your wrist. Okay. And I'm actually glad you said that because in the wind, it really points out if you roll your wrist over. Because I see a lot of people who started out with like a champion box as their, most, as their first disc, and they couldn't do anything with it, and then they learned to throw it on a big Anheuser, and then it would flex. Anybody just get the most stable disc, coolest looking disc? Their first disc, anybody? Yeah. 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 So, so, I mean, what you learn is that is it good that obviously you got the fastest disc on the market, but also it's not, they're not ready for that disc. Because a lot of beginners go out and they get the fastest disc they can find. They say it's the one that will get you the most distance. But it teaches you bad habits. Because you're coming, you learn that you need to come over to get any more distance, but that's not the case. What you need to learn is throw the hard hyzer right here, or backhand, obviously, and you want to come across your body right here. Because you don't need to come this way. You're not going to get a lot of power like that at all, like I just showed you. Is what the way to see that you're not rolling your wrist is watch your hand after you throw. People uh -oh. you call it the backhand is because you're not you going can. like this, and then you see your forearm. You're throwing a backhand, and then you're releasing, releasing here, and you're going to see the back of your hand. So if you're coming through, if you're coming through here, and then rolling your wrist as you're trying to get too much torque. And then you're releasing the disc basically like this. 